Good morning again. Well, today we're gonna we're gonna install a five C call it chuck, and uh, this one I picked up from I bought from a, a Bob Bertrand and down in in Louisiana from Lathemaster Lathemaster dot com. I bought it because it looked like a pretty good product and it was probably about half the price I'd paid for some more distinguished brands but it's uh, it came in it's extremely well finished and uh, uh, we'll just put it together and see how it performs now any lathe or any chuck that you buy whether it's a three jaw four jaw independent or or a self-centering chuck you're gonna have a back plate in my case, it's a, a my lathe. It's a D14 uh, cam lock. A lot of the newer lathes are like that. Or you might have a screw on, but a screw on uh, uh, back plate. But every every chuck that I've come across, anyway, uh, whether you notice it or not, has got a back plate. The back plate fits in in the back of your uh, back of your chuck uh, to allow you to mount it to your particular lathe. Excuse me one second here. And on the back plate, you got one one part of the back plate, one of these planes here, is going to register against your, the chuck itself. In this case, this plane here, you can see it, uh, comes up short of, of touching the chuck. So it's this plane here that will be that will register. And it's really important when you get a chuck, uh, if you buy a new chuck, is to find which 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 surface is, is registering, and then we'll give it a little skim cut there, take off maybe a, a half a thousand, five ten thousand or thousands. Uh, use your test dial indicator to see uh, if there's any run out there, and just do a nice little cut. In my case, right across there. Now, I've done that off camera to save time. So I know that this is running true to my uh, true to my lathe, and on my particular lathe you've seen me use, uh, I know that my run out on that spindle is something uh, uh, just a hair, maybe over one ten thousandths of an inch run out. So once we've got that done, then we then we simply assemble the the chuck here by putting this together, and we put the we put the, we put the bolts up, a bolt through here. I hope this is not as. Uh, I hope I don't make this look any harder than it really is. Uh, we put our bolt through here, and get them lined up for the holes. I guess I had to get a. I guess I had, I should get a uh, the correct size uh, uh, Allen for this X wrench for it. I'm sure this will be a metric, so we'll get a, let's see here. Yeah, this is a six millimeter metric. And now let's see if we get this thing dot over here. I can't appear to be about right. Uh, not quite. Uh, let's try it this way here. No, that seems... I think I got it there. We'll run these things in pretty snug. Now, in this particular uh, chuck, one of the reasons I was drawn to this for uh, that is that this got what they sometimes call set true or true true set. They different different chuck manufacturers have a different name. Uh, not a bad idea if you if you're looking at a new chuck to make sure you got this feature on a on a three jaw because you can. Always make it pretty darn accurate that way. Four jaw, of course, you don't need that. It's got independently adjustable draws already. Okay, now I'm just going to bring these up about about firm there. All right. Now, if you look at this, you'll see uh, around the side of this thing, I've got four adjusting uh, Allen screws here. And what they do is, when this is sitting on the lathe, you just like uh, dial in your four jaw chuck. Is I can dial this in 
uh, on a lathe where this is running just as true as I can get it, uh, approaching uh, exactly what my lathe's turning at. In my, like in my case, it's a, it's a right about uh, one ten thousandths. So now I just tighten this just a little bit more. Then we're going to switch this thing over to to the lathe here. And okay, now let me move this camera over here to where. more likely to see just what I'm doing here. Come on now. Okay. All right. Okay, let's get this thing set up here. All right, that's just about, that's about right, I think. All right. Now, Bear with me here one second. I guess I better check, make sure my audio is my audio is still recording, which it is. Uh, make sure my make sure my yeah, that's still recording. And lastly, this one here is still recording. I hope. Okay, yeah, that's still recording. Okay, so now we're going to mount this. We're going to mount this chuck and a lathe, and I've got a witness mark on this thing, uh, so that I can always put it back in the lathe, just where it'll always go back in the same place. Uh, that, that helps me with my, with my repeatability. And then just turn this thing here, and Okay, I just turn these over just to snug them up and then I'll come across and, and go, get a little bit better here the second time around. All right, okay, now I'll go one more time, so I'm pretty good. Okay, all right, okay. That's going to look pretty good. <clears throat> I've used call it, uh, call it blocks in a mounted in a chuck before, but this is the first time I've ever uh, put one of these things on my own lathe. And I think it can come in pretty handy for a lot of parts up to any round stock or square stock up to about a one and an eighth inch. So the uh, nice thing is you don't have the jaws in the way, so... I think I'll probably put this to a pretty good use. All right, now we're going to put a collet in it uh, to run a dial indicator over. Okay. Okay. This thing. Okay. Yeah, I'll suck that caught in, hopefully. Of the different kind of collet chucks, this one is one of the slowest to do, but uh, the other ones cost a lot more money and or a lot more trouble, so I feel I'll do pretty good with this one. It takes a little while to crank this thing in there. It's not hard to crank. I got this spring on here. I like the spring because it keeps you from leaving the chuck in. However, 
it's a little problematic. I might, I might end up, uh, <laughs> I might end up removing it. But if I can get used to it, I'll probably keep it in there. Okay, it's sucking that collet in, which will, which will squeeze around that. That I've got a, I've got a ground precision rod in there. Uh, it's a, it's a, as close to five hundred thousands. I use it for, used, used to use it for when I was. Uh, uh, blueprinting uh, rifle actions. Okay, we're getting up there close now. Okay. Now I don't want to. On any call, you don't want to. You don't. You don't want to reef on it a lot. You want it, it tight, but you don't want to reef on it too much. Okay. Now we'll put a test dial indicator on there, and just see how we're doing with that. Uh. And a a, a wrench here to. Test style indicator. Uh, just to make sure, make sure how true we're turning it. Uh, yeah, I've got a dial indicator here handy. That's good enough. All right. Okay. And we got the crack wrench here. Okay. I'll set my. I'll set my lay the neutral here uh, uh, to where it's not too hard to turn around. Now let's get this thing here set up where we get a decent reading on it. Uh, uh, I don't want this thing to go too long, but I don't want to short change either. So. Okay, this thing up here. This thing right up here, where I can get it. All right. I'm not sure you'll be able to. Not sure you'll be able to see this, but maybe using this bigger dial. All right, let's get this thing down like this around here. Okay, let's get it down there. All right, now we tighten this thing up. We'll be able to see the deflection. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to set this thing for zero. Though we're not really concerned with zero, we're just concerned mostly with the, with what the deflection is. But we'll set it about zero. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, that's close enough. Now, okay, now let's just turn this thing and see what effects we're getting. So, uh, right there, right there's high, about five thousandths, and then a low spot. Okay, low. So, just like a poor Chuck, yeah, Chuck will take this high side. And we'll tighten it up a little bit there to move that back down. Okay. Yeah, let's loosen that one over there. Or the opposite one. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Bring that one up to zero a little bit. Okay. This one here is a little high, so, whoops, wrong one. No, I, I got the right one, here we go. Okay, whoops, that's going a little high, so I gotta go to the other side. Okay, now this one here, tighten this one up, I ought to bring this in there closer. Okay, there, go about halfway. And, uh, That's about right. Let's see here now. That wrong direction, so we'll loosen that just a hair. And we'll tighten this one up just a hair more. 
Get back there close. Okay. And this one here. Uh, there's got to go a little more. Okay. And here. Okay, I'm going to have to loosen that side over there. Loosen this one just a hair. Just a little bit. And around here. I'll tighten this one a little bit more. Okay, that's getting closer to zero. Okay. We'll do this just a little more. Yeah, it didn't take long. It looks like we got zero detectable run out there. Uh, yeah, let's go in here. This one just a hair more on this one here. Now, I don't know if you can see that dial, but I've got no, I'm going to call that zero run out. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Hang on a minute here. Now that didn't take long, and like I say, I want to I want to thank uh, uh, Bob Bertrand down at uh, Lathe Master, a heck of a nice guy to talk to. Uh, I'll try to put his information up on on uh, in text when I edit this thing. Anyway, Bob's a nice guy to talk to. Also, uh, I like him; he's a fellow Vietnam vet. Uh, but he'll spend the time with you. And as I said before. If you're looking at buying a chuck, remember, uh, when you're looking through catalogs and stuff, they, they usually will show you a chuck. You pick out the chuck you want, but remember, you're going to have to, almost always, you're going to have to buy a, uh, a back plate to, to fit it. You know, if you need a six-jaw chuck, then you got to decide to uh, see. Now, my lathe has got a screw on. It's got a D13, D14, D15. <coughs> uh, and, uh, and then... And then there will be a, some, some minor machining to, to make sure that fits. And as you saw, uh, I had meant this to be a review, but uh, I can tell you, this thing is, uh, is uh, what you hear some people talk about, dead nuts. I mean, it's, uh, I've got no readable run out on that thing at all by adjusting that. And that's a, that's a feature you want to look for on a, a, a chuck, a collet chuck like this, 5C collet chuck. Or a three-jaw chuck. It's nice if you, a lot of guys use a three-jaw chuck. I, I got used to years ago, usually just leaving a four-jaw chuck in because with practice you can get to where you can dial in a part into a four-jaw chuck. But a three-jaw chuck's nice, particularly if you've got the feature I just showed you of that adjust true or true adjust, whatever, whatever a manufacturer calls it, uh, to where you can, you, can, you can keep those, you can keep that thing uh, actually centered with the rest of your lathe. All right, well, I want to thank you very much, and uh, 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 I, want to, I wish you all a good morning, and, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.